video time. Well, hello there, and welcome back to the STL 2D platformer series. Today, we're gonna to be working on dynamic arrays, which are arrays that can be resized. By the way, code like coders, cause this is gonna be an epic video. So the very first thing we do, as always with these tutorials, is we open up our Sublime Text project file. So you just double click on it, and it opens just like that. Easy as a well-greased fart. <laughs> programming tip of the day. If you hit F11 in Sublime Text, it goes full screen mode. So go into source and then inside there, open up main.cpp. So the very first thing we're gonna do is replace our entity array that we created in the last video with a dynamic array. So what's a dynamic array? Dynamic is the opposite of static, which basically means it's changeable, it's malleable. Static arrays, you set the size, as in the case of our entities, we say four, and this array, this chunk of data can never exceed four uh, entities. So C++, it's, it's, he's a pretty smart old boy. He knows that if you uh, say four entities, he calculates the size of one entity and then just makes room for four entities. And then you can refer to that chunk of memory as an array. That chunk of memory cannot grow. So that's, you're stuck with four. You're stuck with however you told C++ to do things. Throw our array of entities lifetime. The, the array's lifetime. It will always have four entities within it, no matter what. Case closed, but that is only throughout its lifetime. So if you wanted to create an array of entities, if you want to just grow this array by one, throw another entity in there, well, what you do is you'd actually delete this entire chunk of memory and then create a new array that is larger than the last one by one. Now that sounds pretty slow and that is pretty slow, but luckily there's quite a few different ways of going about it that you can really just fine tune and hone in to optimize for speed. So the first thing we're going to do is scroll up to the top of our program and add a new hashtag. So hashtag and just going to just the pipe to get out. We throw in a hashtag include, which is just to say, hey, somebody else has some code floating out there in the realms of C++. Let's snag that and insert it into our code. Vector. The mathematically inclined might be saying vector. Are we, are we talking about mathematical 2D or 3D vectors? Nope, this is nothing to do with math at all. Vector was not a very good name for this because a vector, the little thing we were talking about earlier with that array that you could just resize, well, that's what a vector is. So how do you declare a vector? Well, let's declare that vector right after our array of entity. All you gotta do to create a C++ vector is just go std colon colon vector. And then you do something that we haven't quite done before. And that's we open and we close some square brackets, uh, angular brackets. And then inside the angular brackets, you declare the data type of the array. So let's start with uh, an array of entities. Why not? So we say, this is going to be an array of entities. However, it doesn't, it's not limited to just entities. Of course, you could use an integer. You could use, it could be an array of booleans, whatever data type you want, doesn't really matter. So entity. So we're gonna create an array of entities and then you just go space and then you say whatever you want, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna call this one entities, but hold on a second. You can't have two variable names that are exactly the same. So instead of adding a like a two here or like a one here, we're just gonna throw another E in there because well, the E key was kind of closest to my finger at that exact second, so <laughs> why would I make the stretch for the number two key? I mean, might as well just go with that. And just like that, you can do one of two things, and that's either you can go equals, open up some curly braces, and inside there, declare some entities like we just did here, or alternatively, you can just throw in a quick little semicolon right there and call it a day. When you don't set the vector equal to anything initially, then you just create an empty little vector, an empty little dynamic array and it doesn't have any memory in it but you just said hey maybe we might want to shove some memory in that later you essentially want to think of an std vector as a container of memory and it's a container that can expand and contract so it can get bigger and it can get smaller typically in programming we refer to a vector as in the array sort of a vector as an std vector the reason being it just avoids a lot of confusion because there is a mathematical thing called a vector too and why on earth they called a vector is really beyond my comprehension i don't even know if they know why they called it a vector but whoa, whoa I i'm not criticizing c plus plus definitely not c plus plus is the golden language there's clearly no flaws with c plus plus and if you think there is that's heresy i would never dare criticize c plus plus there's just it's it's perfect language now a side note you may know that you can actually go 
using namespace std, which refers to the standard library. So using the standard library and the standard library namespace. Yes, you can do that. And then you don't have to do the std con con. However, I explicitly like to go std con con for this exact reason. This is the very reason that I never go using namespace std. If you didn't have the std con con there, you wouldn't know that it's actually a memory type, like a memory container. If you just go vector, well, that looks awfully similar to a mathematical vector. So having the std con con is very important and avoids a lot of confusion. So like we were talking about before, you can actually just declare a whole stack of entities right off the bat by just, well, we can actually copy and paste this control, uh, highlight that much, control C. And then you just want to paste that right after our entities. And that is tabbed pretty, pretty nastily. Now what we can do is we can just delete this whole chunk of code or why delete it when you can go control forward slash to comment it out. What's commenting it out you may say? Well commenting it out is just basically saying it's a comment. You just turn the whole thing into a comment and a comment in programming is a little tidbit of information that only is useful for someone reading the source code. The computer completely discards it and never uses it. So that's why you see comments like that. So two forward slashes are typically a comment. So we have our array of entities and now we need a way to actually cycle through every single entity and draw them all. So we're gonna scroll down, so we scroll down and instead of this four int i equals zero, we can use something called a range based for loop. What is a range based for loop? Well, essentially what it does is instead of declaring manually how many times we want this chunk of code right here to run, we can actually tell the computer to decide that for us. What we can do is we can say, hey, for every single element within our dynamic array right here in our std vector, but then run this chunk of code right here. To do that, all you have to do is you just go for and then go entity. You'll get some people who say auto would we'll throw the auto keyword in there. I honestly despise the auto keyword. I just rarely use it. If I only use it like if it absolutely makes certain sense to use it. What is the auto keyword? You may say Autobots. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with Autobots. Auto just says, okay, uh, computer, you figure out what data type this is going to be. And that just, in my opinion, that really muddles up the code. That just turns your crystal clear running river of code into the outflow of a septic tank. That's what it turns it into, in my opinion. I mean, you're more than welcome to use the auto keyword, but I personally don't like using it that much. So what I, what you instead do is you just go entity, throw in a reference. So throw in the ampersand, and this is to say, hey, um, don't copy this entity. It's getting kind of complex here, and we're going to try and be brief, but basically throw in the, the ampersand here. Otherwise, you create a copy of the actual every single entity within the for loop when you run the for loop. So throw in the ampersand as much as you can, unless, of course, you're cycling through an array of pointers. But again, we're getting complicated here. So for entity, and we'll quickly name that P. So the reason we're getting reference is we're getting a reference to an array or an element within our array. So let's get a reference to it. That's why we have the ampersand. And we'll, we'll name our quick little reference. We'll call it P and then add a colon and then declare the array that you want to cycle through. So it's going to be entities. Gotta have that double E. And then what we can do is instead of going entities, window.render entities, and then our I iterator, our I iterator no longer exists, we replace the P. Why did I call it P? I'm thinking platforms for some reason because of a really old tutorial that I once went through and they used P a lot. So I, yeah, let's replace that with E. So for every E, we'll call it every entity E in entities, an array of entities, well, window.render E. So basically we generate a reference to every single element within the array of entities when we run this for loop. And then we say, okay, window.render that reference to that entity. If we control save this, hit F7, we should get exactly the same results. And yes, we do, marvelous. So that is looking pretty cool. So now we can make this, uh, we can make the, the size of the array as big as we want. And the computer is gonna know to render every single entity within the array. So that is pretty cool because we're getting the, prog the computer to do the hard work for us. Now, what happens if we want to add a new element within the array? Well, uh, lucky for us, we can do that. So all we have to do is we just go create an entity. So just go entity and then call the constructor by opening up some parentheses and inside there let's let's put this one 100 pixels to the right 
and maybe 50 pixels down will be fine and we'll give it our grass texture as well but that is not how you declare a object what you do to create the object is you go, go entity so save the data type space then name the variable so let's just call this you know, wilson yeah old boy wilson so we've created a brand new entity we've called him wilson and now we actually have to group him into our array of entities so how do we do that we just go entities dot push back so push back there's a few different keywords you can do insert i'm fairly certain with vectors there's a few different ones but we'll just use push back for now so this just says hey at the very end of the stack at the end of the stack insert a new entity so plop a new one on the back so that's why it's push back we'll push back wilson control save that and hit f7 and it will be good as gold look at that we got five entities five blocks and that is exactly what we want to see however something to note this entity wilson we might have thought that he actually got grouped into our array of entities right here our entities that with the ent entities that push back but he actually didn't we actually created a copy of wilson when we said entities dot pushback the memory that wilson here is hogging like a dirty little rascal well he's still hogging that memory because he has never been told to delete until we get to the end of his scope which at wilson's scope starts right here and it ends right here so once we get to this closing curly brace then wilson gets deleted and then he stops hogging that memory like a dirty rotten pig so the question is how can we get rid of wilson a little bit faster the answer is we just throw in a quick little scope so if we just tab these guys over tab them over and then we go uh, tab ourselves over open up a curly brace and then end a curly brace after we push back wilson into our array of entities we'll have taken care of wilson so now wilson's lifetime is limited to inside these two curly braces word to the wise make sure you throw the pushback call right inside the lifetime of wilson so make sure it's inside wilson's scope all right so i hope you enjoyed today's episode in the next episode we're going to create vectors actual mathematical vectors so we're going to create a vector class then incorporate some vector arithmetic lots of good stuff in the next episode too so stay tuned for that i hope you enjoyed make sure you code like code like coders and i will see you in the next video Hmm, I wonder who that could be. It's Mick Van Buck! Why, thank you. Mick Van Buck, Trophy Mosquito, is a hilarious humor book written by my dad, Peter N. Mast. It is jam packed with hilarious humor stories and is guaranteed to have you doubled over laughter. So, bit of development in the Mick Van Buck Chronicles. My dad is now working on getting an ebook published and an audiobook published of Mick Van Buck lights it up. So, that's the bigger Mick Van Buck to come, and this is a prelude to that bigger Mick Van Buck. So, what is Mick Van Buck? Mick Van Buck is clean humor. It is cl a collection of hilarious humor stories written by my dad, and the rare thing about humor is finding clean humor. If you enjoy a good laugh, which I'm sure all of us do, make sure you grab a Mick Van Buck. Let's have a little read a second, because, I mean, Mick Van Buck is hilarious. If you let enough of the little mosquitoes feast on you for a while, you can draw in a really big trophy mosquito. The key is, if you start to feel delirious and drained, lethargic would be the word. It would be best to get your shirt back on and seek medical attention for your now needed blood transfusion. So you're probably wondering, how can I get my hands on McFan Buck Trophy Mosquito? Excellent question. All you have to do is send your full name and mailing address to codegopher at gmail.com. And as part of a giveaway, I'm going to be giving away 10 free McVan Bucks to the first 10 people who ask. So five has been have been asked for so far. We're shipping internationally and completely free of charge. So we're, we'll cover shipping on the entire cost. All you got to do is send your full name and mailing address to codegopher at gmail.com and you will win a free Mick Van Buck Trophy Mosquito, which laughter is guaranteed.